form. I'm going to open the meeting at 6.05, um, public hearing for uh, the Brookfield Zoning Board of Appeals, Tuesday, October 10th, 2017, from the Brookfield Town Hall. I ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. The purpose of this hearing is to consider a request from Stephen Lamoureux to construct a garage at his, at his property located at 14 Schoolhouse Cross Road in Brookfield. A special permit is required due to the lot area being less than 70,000 square feet. The property is located in a rural residential district. Do we have Mr. Lamoureux present? Yep. Uh, just, if you want to come on up to the chair, if the board has any questions for you. Okay, technically, the applicant uh, is using a lot, but it's your home. All right, so the issue is that you have 32,640 square feet. That's correct? Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. I'm having a hard time reading the number on the plot plan. Is there a 25 foot setback there, or is that 23? We do have 25 on the, on the side. There. So you meet that? Yes. Okay. So the only issue is the actual square footage on the property. Are there any questions for Mr. Lamro or his contractor, Mr. Bond? Well, I had gone down and met with the greenhouse people, and we went around on the golf course to see where it was. And uh, I don't see any problem. And everybody has their packet, correct? So this is an issuance of a special permit requires the unanimous vote. Seeing we have four members, it has to be a four zero vote. Are there any questions before I entertain a motion? What's the size of the uh, garage gonna be? It was twenty by thirty-two. Huh? It was twenty by thirty-two, right? Yes. There's no drawings for that, correct, on this package? Yeah. Yeah. Just I do have some rough if you'd like to move you over. I'm all set. You're meeting the same. Yeah, I think something rough is fine. Uh, just the dimensions and where yeah. it's going to be placed. Absolutely. Yeah. You have a packet, correct? The, the, yeah. There's a plot plan in there with that. I didn't know if it was a 25 or a 23 foot setback. Yeah. The I, red red structure is the... Um, I must have... I don't know if this was on here or I wrote this. No, somebody That's else this. It, it, yeah, I can't. I guess it's 23 feet. Well, they're saying 25. Well, that, that was a question I had. It looked like a 23. Somebody wrote 23 in there. Is it so? It's, so, what, which is it? 23? No, I, I, it's a set there. It was definitely from the, 25 from, so this, from the corner. Right. The right. It, you it, it you can, understand it's going to become an issue when Mr. Taylor requests an as right? No, it's, if it's 23, it's, no, there's no issue at all. We, we, no, it'll be 25, just to be sure it doesn't. Then where have does to be 23, 23 come from? No idea. Is, are you sure that's a three, or is that's that a five that was kind of drawn messy? That, that's it a looks like a three, but it also that, could be like know, a five. If it's something I mean, that, well, that's the first question I that, had. That's a three. It looks like a five. It looks like a three. It you looks have, like you a have three. a copy. <laughs> My copy looks like it could be a five, like you said, it looks like it was drawn too fast. Right. Bang, bang. Yeah. 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 That's why I had the first question, line. because if you're admitting that it's 23 right by there, you're not falling within the setback. So we can just take that as a 25? Right. We'll take it I as well, we can take it as The onus would be on the building inspector. I do have on the, on the letter of intent, just after we had measured, that it's 60 feet from the road, 25 feet or more from right-hand property lines. 40 feet or more from left-hand property and 50 feet or more from rear property lines. What's the and that was all field measured. What's the outside dimension? 20 by 30, 20 by 32. Full outside dimensions, 20 by 32. Okay. Yeah. And you made sure all okay. those lumps across them. You notified all the butters. Is anybody here this evening here in Bradstead? Do you have any questions, comments, concerns? I'm not really sure what all the formalities are, so I was just curious. I did speak to him last year previously about his intentions. That's kind of my only 
long term concern is if it's intended just for a garage and storage or if he intends to use it for something else further down the line. I don't have a problem with the location. Do you have an answer to that question? Yeah, well I mean I was I was did want to make the upstairs into eventually over time, depending on funds and um, everything. I wanted to make the upstairs like an office studio um, for myself, storage for other things, and that's pretty much it. Downstairs is the garage for my business. Well, that's pretty much the gist of that. This wife is requiring him to have somewhere to move the musical equipment to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't think it'll be zoned or permittable to have a living area above it, so. Unless there's another special meeting. Okay, you're out of the zoning. Technically, yeah. But he'd have to jump a lot of hurdles to have living above it. Are you, do you object to the? No. Yeah, Anybody? Honestly, a living space up there would be pretty difficult. And we, we're, we're just kind of doing a shell and then storage up there. The egress and fire yeah. and all that. Electricity, will it be plumbing, bathroom? No, pl no plumbing, so no. So the lower level would be a garage and upstairs is storage and office. Yeah. Maybe some flowers and plants. So, so you've got a ground floor uh, dimensions there. So what's the height of this? Uh, the elevation should be the next page. I mean the height of the building. Uh, it was uh, uh, 16 on the floors and then a hip roof to keep it low. I, I want to say the overall was 21. Do you have a picture? So it's, it says in the uh, request, it says a, uh, detached garage. Yes. Yep. So it's going to be more than a garage. Uh, well, a garage with the, with the storage above. With the sto storage, it sounds like an office. Well, I'm, it would just be good to put down on the permit exactly what you're going to do. At this, this time, Loma, when, when they presented this to you and you denied it, was did Jeff have any issues with the renderings that they no, submitted? It's, okay. less, it's less confusion if you just tell us what you're going to do. I, I so we can write it up that way. I mean, all we're doing is issue, the only issue is the square footage of the lot, and that's what we have to right. issue the special permit for. We don't tell him what he can build, that the onus yeah. is on the building inspector and the zoning enforcement officer. That's up to the building inspector. Well, if it's, a, if it's a tall structure with multiple floors, it seems to me that we should know that in the application. Well, you're knowing because that then that distance. leads to what's actually going to be used for. Well, you're knowing this through the discussion. I mean, I, that's I do, why I brought it up to discuss it. I do have. The, I mean, yeah, I, I went through everything that I was planning to do with it. I mean, sometimes plans change. I guess it could just be storage, and that's it. I mean, if I run out of space in my sheds, it's just a storage so. spot, we're, and that's we're, it. We're I mean, not, I'm never we're not saying you can't do it. It's just so it's a two-story building. Yes. Right. And um, what, what, what was there? I was just concerned with the long term. Um, Use plans. Um, just one other question, if I don't know if it's the time to do it or not, but just to clear my question, I thought that the bylaws were that you weren't supposed to build within 50 feet of the boundaries. Is that it's, what this it's is? It's 25 on sides and rear, and it's 50 feet in front. From the road, okay. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion to allow Mr. Lamro a special permit for said application. Do I have a motion? I have a micro motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous? Minutes reflect that it's unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn special, I mean the uh, special the So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Did you, you have to get a hold of her? No. She didn't answer the phone. Oh. Everything has to be unanimous for special permits. We're all set. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, it's good to bring it up so the neighbor the you have the mail and be surprised yeah. or think we didn't do a job. Nick, this is a special permit too, right? Yeah. Which one is it? Which one do you want? Sue Brogan? Yes. Special permit. 615, I'll call the next special permit meeting to order. It's in regards to 39 Allen Road, Brookfield, Susan Brogan. I was forwarded to this board from the zoning enforcement officer. I was referred this case because construction of a deck and a floodplain requires a special permit according to the zoning bylaw. Section 6, non-conforming land use and structure. Part C, Section 1, pre-existing non-conforming structures or uses may be extended, altered, or changed provided the Board of Appeals grants a special permit and makes a finding that such extension, alteration, or change shall not be substantially more detrimental to the general public or to abutters than the existing non-conforming use. Oh, I forgot when I Ms. Brogan is with us. I forgot, to put on, I forgot to put the deck in there. And I will open the floor to you, ma'am. Can you just no. explain the intent of the project? We put a addition on the house, which we got a permit for, and I forgot to draw in the deck. So there's the addition, and now it needs the deck. So seven foot wide length of the addition. So the there's no request of the size of the deck. What was the size of the deck? It was seven feet. Seven wide. feet wide, twenty five feet long. <coughs> and what's what's the setback gonna be on the side? On the side I believe it's gonna be less than eight feet. Less than eight feet. So for those that are out there listening, um, this is on got the addition on the lake and lots down there are kind of posted size stamp. Anyways, eight feet is kind of a lot of area for lake property, no? But it doesn't meet zoning. And there was nothing there prior. This is new construction. The deck is new. The proposed deck. I'm sorry. It was never there. It was new construction. I don't understand, Steve. There was never an existing deck there. No, no. This is no, brand new. This is brand new. Draw the new deck. Try to be a little bit careful. Anybody on the board have questions? See, just across the front of that. And does it come back? Just a little bit around right. the side like that. Right. You know what I mean? Just so that it doesn't go. Right. We don't want him falling off. No, we do not want him falling off. <laughs> so is this really in the floodplain? No. Yes. Well, no, our floodplain. house isn't in the floodplain. We are in the floodplain. Okay, we're in the floodplain. Yes. I don't think the deck is. Well, it's it could be, be close. Right. It's it elevated. Like four and a half feet tall. Right. I think so the floodplain is towards the back there, uh, near where the um, boundary of the water is. Uh, we use the maps and the assessors, and according to the maps, we're in the floodplain. You're using that? Okay, do you have the uh, FEMA map? I don't know what they use. We just use the assessment maps. Can I the, just say I that I was on Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissioners for you were. seven years? I know you were. I was on just before you left. No, no, no. Not this Conservation Commission, the state one. Okay. And floodplain, any construction in a floodplain, the main consideration is if it will affect the ability of the floodplain to us if to absorb water. Yeah. Right. And so you're elevated deck, anyway. And the deck wouldn't how, how, affect that. How high a Above the ground, is it? It's Rough. About four and a half feet. Yeah. Up to my chest. So. When I looked at the 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 floodplain on the FEMA, the FEMA maps should be in uh, your office, in the building inspector's office. He should have the FEMA. I'm pretty sure he has a FEMA map, and I think I the. I thought the assessor would I, have the official FEMA map, but I'm not. I don't. I don't, I don't think they do. No. And um, I think the floodplain is back towards where the water is. It is on your property, but I don't think it goes up as far as the house. It's close. Well, no, it's up four feet. The deck is four and a half feet. feet up. No, I'm talking about the floodplain. Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> so anyway, it's, it looks good. So the, the five foot extension off the gable end of the addition, is there a door over there? No. 
So what's the, pur very much the purpose of extending that? Just so we can have a nice view over there. The view to the neighbor's property? Well, no, yeah. of the lake. Because we have a 12 foot high fence over there, so we can't see anything on neighbors now. Yeah. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Thelma or Ms. Brogan? We have a blueprint in there. One sec, Dave, before we get the board. Have any questions for either? Nope. No. Right. Do we have any no. butters? Yes. I'm not in a butter, but just for the information of the gathering, um, is the deck on pilings? It's going to be on cement post. Yes. Cement post. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the footing, the footing will be the twelve. The footing is well, you'll, you'll extend with a, with, a, with a pressure so, treated so post. there's no permanent foundation that would displace water in the event of a flood. No. Because no, they're only going to be like this much over the, a few inches over the uh, surface of the ground, and then we'll have a post back there. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. Any butters with questions? Dave, did you have a question? Yeah, you got a blueprint. How close? How close is it to, to my boundary? Less than it'll be less than eight feet. the project or no I'm just but I'm just concerned how close it's getting I mean through the chair this actual putting this on is further away than the main house is from the building that is right on the property line actually the garage to me I think it's the garage so it is further away than any of those structures the from the which is a gallery's question it's already just in the garage Jeff? So, as the deck protrudes towards the lake, I'm going to run a Jeff Edwards go the next door. The further it goes out, the further we go. The further it's away from the Brunswick line. It's on a, probably a 22 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So, the further, after, for every foot, uh, based on that, on that building, I'm going to say it's going to increase six inches almost for every foot. That it, that it goes out it, the, the only change to any other special permit is that five, five and a half foot jog off the gable end. And that's why I asked it. And if there's really no objection, I, I don't object to it. The part that goes around the corner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other butters have any concerns, questions? Board have any other questions? Entertain a motion, a motion to approve the special permit for said project. Make a motion. Do we have a second? Three. This is only three and Any half discussion? Half Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Three and a half out. Yeah, it's three and a half out. Are you in favor of favor. approving? Votes unanimous. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. That's 623, Pat. All in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Aye. Aye. Adjourning, we good? Aye. Aye, aye. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Sure. Good, aye. 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 Tim, thanks. Aye. All right, next hearing will be in seven minutes. Yes, sir. Seven minutes? Seven yeah. minutes. Six yeah. minutes. All right, we'll open the third public hearing, 633. Brookfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, October 10th, 2017 in the Brookfield Town Hall Bank Room. The purpose of this hearing is to consider a request from David Holm, David, if you could please join us, to sell cars at his property located at 40 Allen Road in Brookfield. A special permit is required due to the lot being located in a floodplain. I also add a rural residential area. I'll let you present your case, sir. Well, I recently retired uh, from the construction business and I got into, as a hobby, selling a couple of classic cars here and there. And I want to uh, continue the hobby and start it as an actual business to be legitimate and have a 
license to basically uh, buy and sell a couple of classic cars at a time. And also there's a little bit of a niche thing where you can, um, through the internet, you get in touch with people trying to sell their cars or helping them sell their cars which don't have the ability to advertise them on the internet and market them and you can charge them a certain percentage to help them sell their cars where the car isn't even on my property whatsoever but I'm helping them sell it and that's what I want to do so I gotta get a permit through town to do that so that I can uh, you know, license. have a license to do it. <clears throat> um, through discussion with town council through, for the board, um, I was, I had issues with the floodplain because they do have documentation that um, they are not in a floodplain and had uh, been removed. Mm -hmm. um, it is still a rural residential area. Our, our bylaws are very specific and it's voted by the town. Uh, they're not silent on the issue. There is a section at the bottom where we can make a decision um, if, if an issue is silent. But this is under auto sales, rental, and services, and it's specifically not allowed in rural residential or floodplain. So to me, that's where the issue lies. Open the board to discuss. Like, I'm not going to be repairing cars on my property whatsoever. I'm sympathetic. I believe you should be able to do pretty much anything on your property. You pay for it. A lot of money in taxes, actually, because I live on the lake. <laughs> but, but the town got together and they were very specific on auto sales in a rural residential area. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of what we're being with the fire right now. Do we have any abutters that want to comment? Or? We have people in that room. Just must be the Alan Can you just say your name for the record, please? Leonard Clark. Got that? Yes, sir. I live at uh, 42 Allen Road, right next door to me. I don't really have a problem with the idea of them doing it, but I want restrictions on it. Mm -hmm. The restrictions I'd like on it are business between 8 and 9 and Nine and four, and uh, no more than two cars, and absolutely no service pay whatsoever. No. Would you have any questions for the gentleman? Comments? Mrs. Thelma, your, your comment on the bylaw? Like I told the home, they're, they're very good friends of us, and I just, it's, you're in a difficult it's situation. Prohibited. No, it's, it's it. You're next. Oh, I'm to find one. It's a prohibited use, and that's why he's the only to the board. And you wasn't a butter. What's your feeling? I have no problems. But um, the ZEO also. So I can't intentionally violate the law. Discussion. Your feelings. There is a business up the street that lady's got that small sign for the Colburn place. So I really don't see a problem with, you know, two cars sitting on somebody's front lawn, you know, trying to sell them. And who knows how long they're going to be there? You know, it could be a few days, it could be, you know. And, and the whole idea is if, it, if this business does well, I, you know, it might grow, who knows? And then I might be interested in going and purchase something on Route 9 here in town or renting something here on Route 9 in town and, and uh, creating maybe some more uh, revenue and taxes for the town. But at, the, <laughs> at, the point, at this point, you know, I, I can't afford to do something like that. I just want to start doing it the right way and get a permit to do it so that I can be legitimate and you know, you know, get a deal as license. You only have to do it. And the next phase would be to change the address to come back to us if we... Well, part of this process is him getting a license to do it. That's a huge hurdle. Right. Hmm. Um, we have an abutter that only has concerns with the operation, so it doesn't aggravate his lifestyle, which is totally understandable. What's your setback currently now from the road? 
Uh, all we have is the assessor's map of the actual property. Yeah, that's all I have is the assessor. Just a guesstimate. Fly the road. Is that an aerial view? Yeah, I have an aerial view right here, but it's kind of tough to see. But it, I'd say it's it's more than 50 okay. feet, or it's at least 50 feet. This is a lake? Uh, correct. And this is my driveway up here. So the road is right up in here. And this is your driveway? That's my driveway. And this is a trailer that's now over here. This is my Is this grass or driveway? Yeah, this is all, all grass that's up in a higher area. Whose residence is that? That's my shed. Okay. We're pretty closed off. Mm -hmm. Did you want to see this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So my concern, I, I think, just to make me be able to sleep at night, mm -hmm. not to usurp the, the will of the town when they voted on this bylaw, where they specifically <clears throat> said no. Um, Tim, we didn't even get, do you have an issue with? Yeah. So I'll, I'll continue. The only way I'm going to be able to sleep tonight is if there's conditions, especially addressed by an abutter. Which I don't have any problems with. I'd almost make the addition that there are to be no vehicles on the road, that they all have, have to be stored in your driveway, not visible to... to well, I mean, if you're, you're creating more conditions than my neighbors that are living next to me. But you understand the 3,000 people in Brookfield put conditions on you before you even sat down. I mean, this is not a, a dealership where people are going to be driving in because I advertise. This is no advertising to come look at my car. It's just a, an internet thing. And, uh, if he's done, you can. Yeah, go ahead. If he's, if he's a good husband, he's, he's done. Yeah. I'm done for sure. <laughs> he's done. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. So, if we. So the way that our driveway is positioned, if we had to have the two additional, if it is two cars and we have to keep them in our driveway, that would be fine, but it certainly could just create a little bit of... It, logistic it, problems parking our own vehicles going in and getting out of in house. and out of the garage. So, right. I mean, we could do it, but it would, it certainly could create, and if that is the condition in order for this to happen, then we'll comply, but it would, we certainly would prefer if we didn't have to because of getting in and out of the driveway. It, it's getting out of the garage is gonna be, could be an issue. Didn't have to what? I missed oh. something, sorry, go ahead. Well, they didn't have enough room to put. How far is that we, trail? We have enough room to, to have them. But to get in and out of the garage and have them there is going to be... Um, Did you meet the setback for the 50 feet for the front, do you know? From the road to the current we house? De I didn't build the house. We definitely I believe have, so. a, we have, a, this we have a very large open space at the top of the, by the street. The driveway goes down and the house is set a little bit further down. So the driveway is on the side and we actually go down the driveway and then into our garage. garage. So, you know, if, if, if that's what we have to do, then we'll do it because this is a, this is a hurdle in order for him to, to move this forward, but. So, what? Um, if you make them do that, then you're, you're impinging on their safety because they have to park two cars in their driveway as it is now. If somebody had to get an ambulance So there, So you as a- Where they have plenty of room at the top, so you as an like You as a butter have no problem with cars on the road? I have no problem with David and Lisa keeping two cars up in front. No, not at all. They are meticulous, law abiding. Yes, sir. I'm Steve Zay that I'm also kind of butter. I also agree with Susan. I think that having them have cars down there along with their own two cars, one of which is a fairly large truck. Not to mention they also be on the way. So it's going to be there at certain times. And to me, it would be more of a hazard to want to have it in that situation in that area. Yeah. We, I, Steve and I are elderly. We visit there a lot. And if we need an ambulance, 
<laughs> Jeff, are you elderly as well? Are you elderly as well? I'm uh, absolutely I am. You're making an elderly. I am the senior citizen. It's no different than Jeff Edwards again. It's no different than you can drive up and down Allen Road today. You're going to find two or three boats out there for sale. Snowmobile trailers right on the road. It's no different. It's not going to change the appearance of the road whatsoever. And, and especially, the cars that he buys are classic, I mean, they're beautiful cars. I mean, they're well worth, you know, and people, and you know, and that's just said, it's, it's not like they're gonna have teenagers looking for those particular cars. These are cars that are well sought after, and probably only collectors would be looking for these. Their, their property is beautifully maintained. Just, there's sure no doubt about it. Continue yeah. to maintain it. Yeah. Are there any other butters that want to start a small business and see what goes? Interject? No? So, Pat, what was the... Um, There's a hand over here. What was the gentleman's... Sure. Uh, could you please describe the nature of the business again? Will there be any servicing of motors or bars? No. No at all? So None. it's like a pass-through business where you'll... If anything, it will be a buff and shine and they'll be on for sale. That's it. Buff and shine. That's he it. does a lot of that. Oh, no doubt. Uh, Classic car fishing out of here. I was just wondering about if you're putting, if you're in a floodplain and you're doing buff and shine. I'm not in the floodplain. No, not in the floodplain. And there will be no oil anything. His house is like 25 feet up from the lake. Okay. No oil that. distribution of any kind. So Pat, it's not allowed. What was the conditions requested by the gentleman? It's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which was what his request is. Yeah. So no more than two vehicles. And starting at what, uh, nine or eight or nine? Nine to four is fine. Nine is nine to four is fine. No service pay. No service pay. Nine to four Monday through Friday, or that's fine. No, he's not. I didn't really stuff you away, but we can. He does manage to get a few people to stop in us. I, I would think they're, they're more prone to stop. Uh, do, do you oppose a Saturday, a seven day a week, nine to four? No. I don't oppose it. So we should cross out. Thank you. Here, right? it, that's not an issue. And then no service? No. No service to any vehicles on property. Business? Tim, comments? Yeah, I don't feel I can start a tenure here with going against what the bylaw says. It just doesn't feel right. So, I, but I do have a question that um, I don't know if this will help or not. Do why can't you buy? Why can't you buy a car, own it, and then sell it privately? Why does this have to be called a business yeah, if you're going to be so. doing very small amounts of this type of thing? Why does this have to be called a business at your house? Well, you want to answer that one? You wipe my head and, and answer that. Looks like you're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's well, hear it. You want to answer it? Go ahead. So, the, so a couple, there's a couple reasons why it has to be a business. Number one, because in order for him to eventually, hopefully, have this be more than a, a hobby, mm -hmm. this is the first step in him being able to, once he gets the business established, to get a dealer's license. So then he can actually be more efficient, go to an auction, and possibly buy one or two cars at auction. If he doesn't get, if he does, if this isn't approved, then he can't go to get a dealer's license. So then that he can actually go and, and go to the auction. Secondly, we we need it to be a business because he still has many years that he needs to work and hopefully put money away in a retirement account. So there's other there's other reasons why this needs to be an actual business. Well, the huge thing is those auctions, and you can't attend them without a license. Right. That's true. And so the whole barrier is being able to get a dealer's license. And if... Let's, let's say, 
Please. Because he can't drive six hours someplace to find a car. It's Please. not. It's not. It doesn't make sense for him to drive to. It's not cost productive. It, it's not. So by having the ability to go to an auction, that is what will help make a difference. And the dealer and having a dealer's plate as well. So. So, so Tim, I was I was against this before I even came to the meeting, based on the bylaw for the same reasons you have. We yeah. have we have pretty much every abutter here that changed my mind, uh -huh. especially with the three conditions that this gentleman would like to put. I'm, I'm going to vote for it with the conditions. He cannot get a license tonight unless it's a unanimous vote. So I, I know that. That's why I was trying to explore this other way to see what we could satisfy or not satisfy. So you feel like you're, you would be at a real disadvantage in starting what you're starting here you're if, you do, if you don't have the license. That's why I'm doing it now. I want to be and, and, legitimate about and it, too. I, and I feel bad about using the word against it also because I, you know, it's like uh, I don't want to be against the bylaws as they're written. And that's why we're here tonight. For him to buy yeah. and sell a car, you have to pay the tax on it when he sells it. Hmm? You need to what? You'd have to pay the tax on when he sells it. Okay. If he bought and sold a car and put it in the giant, that's the state. Pay the tax on it. Well, we won't talk about that. I think that's why he wants the license. You don't have to do that. Well, no, I yeah, too. think he it's, wants the license well, so that he there's, can... There's a bunch of things. It's, it's um, As a business, of course, businesses, you own them. There's write-offs. So if I go to an auction, there's a write-off going to, say, a Barrett's Action auction looking for a classic car. My entrance fee, my travel, my hotel stay. This it's all business-related, right? This is really an uncomfortable position with the butter, uh, butters here. Um, and that's, that's, not, what, that's not, what sold him. You know, um, you know, supporting him in a way. And, um, and this part here saying no, there's a reason why we have bylaws, so. That's why we're here. But, and that's, that's, I wonder why, if that's, why, he that's why there's only the butters here. here. There's not I, one here that object to it. I wonder if we can't continue this hearing until the next time we meet and search for some other solutions. I, I just wonder if there's another, some kind of other possibility that this could work out where we don't have to violate the bylaws. We're taking and I just wonder if giving it a little time, we might be able to find something. It's like, I can't think of anything else right now. But do you understand the past two and everyone else that we've done, we violate bylaws because it's a special permit. That's what we do. Are we the for it or we're against it? That's no, what the, I, no I, I was on the Zoning Board of Appeals, so that's why we're here. That's why we exist. It's for special circumstances. And I'm sure when this this bylaw was in place, it's, you know, somebody that wanted to create a uh, repair shop and sell 20 cars in the front of their yard type of thing. That's not what I want. This is a classic car only type of thing, couple cars in my yard at any given time, and that's all. That's we, all. We, we but what I'm, no what I'm reading shops, here is, no. a, is an N. It stands for no. I, that's it, what I said. It's, it's not a SP. That's what I said. Standing for a special permit. So mm -hmm. I wonder if um, we still can't, if we can't come to some something else, and I don't see us getting anywhere else, that we can't continue this and um, maybe allow me to explore this with the selectmen or other people in town because I, I just don't feel like we should go against the bylaws this easy. I, I you know, I'm not but, saying... But understand the selectmen have no purview over this. I... I the I, I, the I people in this room, I, the butters have more say than the three selectmen. And they're all here. Well, that's a good uh, re reason, but also the, this is an official document for the town, and I just don't want to go against it this easily. I, I, I and I and I won't say that I won't, but I, I just wonder if we can't continue this for one more meeting. Okay. Did you want to speak, Mr. Chairman? If, if I just briefly, I don't want to interject myself. You, you guys are having a conversation, and I think you've you've correctly. Um, identify the issue, but you, you're, they speak of a license here. Well, your issue would be, I guess, if you were going to issue with a special permit, there are additional licensing requirements, in my opinion, for a used car dealer. That would be a class two license, yes. and that would be yes, a so license issue. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they typically will look at a 
suitable person, suitable place, and there's a bond requirement as well. I already have my bond. And the, and the zoning issue may, may be an issue at that hearing as well. We only have a certain amount of days from the application. If we continue, Sorry. we have to follow okay. in. I think you have a little bit of way to uh, schedule it up for something else. You have, you're not limited to a certain amount of time. You can reschedule this. So? I, the permit is to the home, is to David home, correct? Not to, to, to the property. Not to the property? Yeah. If the home's through the property, he has to file it. But if they, the homes were to sell the property, the exemption, the special permit wouldn't apply anymore, correct? You have to file it with the registry of deeds, I, don't you? You, you, you could make it specific to that to this particular applicant, a special permit. It's it's on his deed. He has to file it with his. But deed. it would be with this with this particular applicant, and it could expire upon a sale. Okay. It could expire have, upon what? A sale. None of us have any problem with homes. We know that they'll do what they say. Yeah. They would be most beautiful, but they wouldn't sell their house for it to become a used car. No. <laughs> so before we before we yes. entertain a motion, Tim which you might vote against. As I, I, I retract that, withdraw. Um, I guess, Dave, do, do you want to have a discussion with Mr. Simons? Or do you want us to vote tonight? I don't know. Simons is... That's me. Yeah, it's, this isn't where I think I need a discussion. Uh, not, not that I would rule it out, but I, I think it would be more the officials in the town. I mean, if you have a, an okay from the ZBA, hopefully the, I guess the selectmen could still technically, they technically could. say no in the first place. So why even, if you could help me out tonight and give me an okay with the rest of the committee. But Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, the way that you framed it is that you wanted to work with different entities to him, for him to place it somewhere else. No, what I asked is just to continue this hearing so I could investigate this a little bit more with the officials in town so I don't go against the bylaws uh, that easily. I think just town, town council just laid it all out. We, we both have a good grasp on it. Um, we both I, have the same issue I, with it. I've I, gotten over the issue. I, I need a little bit more time. And I need a little bit more conversation and discussion about this, and I think the selectmen would be able to help because me with we're, it. We're the, we're, the, we're, the deciding, we're the deciding board right now. No, no, nobody else in town can decide this. Excuse me, is it, I mean, you had said... I didn't say that somebody else was going to decide it. Right? More, really more say this in my concern, they do in regards to this issue, but, but town council is correct. The, the selectmen do issue permits for used car sales. And when I sat there for six years, you sat there for three. The only issues we ever had were the ability to sell and licenses and insurance. If you have a license, if you have property to sell a car, Brookfield welcomes a business owner. So I'm trying. Did what class license is this? No, I'm in the same boat. It's it's tonight. We have everything in front of us. We have a butters that took the time. None right. of them object. We have conditions on this. We have four now. I have legal counsel now. Legal counsel's opinion, Ken. I, do you, you want to vote tonight or do you want to continue? Knowing that it, it's going to take a four or well, vote. It's, it's not going to work then. We're just you don't know. You don't know how he's going to vote. But he's asking to continue. Both of us don't feel there's a need to. Okay, let's uh, use a few more minutes here and see what we can do. What class license are you looking for? Educate me a little bit. I'm not really sure what the class it's is. It's a class two license, dealer's license. So the class first step is to get whatever this is called. Special permit. Special permit. Then. The second step is to file an application with the whoever in town, I don't know, approve the board of selectors <coughs> in order for him to, to apply for a class two license. But we can't apply for a class two dealer's license for him to sell used cars until we get the special permit 
that we can have the business at our That's address. Right. Or, or a different address that allows us to so, And if you say, if the town says no, for the Allen Road, <laughs> then our next step, which we he's not working, and so we can't necessarily afford, but our next step, if you say no to this, for him to have this business is for us to go research commercial property somewhere and pay, which we already have been researching, at a minimum a thousand dollars a month. Wow. So that is our next step. If you don't approve this, then our next step is to go to Sturbridge, Brookfield, wherever we can go, find a commercial piece of property to rent, and then apply for a dealer's license in that town. So, excuse me, so just to clarify, so if this is passed here, it still has to go to the board of yes. yeah. So maybe that's when they can decide. Right. Well, that was part of the yeah. discussion as well. They need this for that license. Right. So the next, the, the gentleman mentioned that he wanted to discuss it with the board of selectmen before making a decision here. But if you're doing this, it's going to go to the board of selectmen. Uh, this is just a point of order. Since the applicant is asking that a, a bylaw be completely put aside to enable his business, shouldn't this be a hearing for a variance rather than a special permit? I think that would come into play with the selectmen issuing the license for the No, property. this has nothing to do with the selectmen. So, so the ZBA can issue either variances or special permits. It requires, Sharon, it requires a special permit. It requires a special permit. I was curious because it does say that it is not allowed in a floodplain and not allowed in rural residential. So my assumption was it would require it to be put aside entirely and that would require a variance. It's not in the floodplain. It's not in the floodplain. Okay. That's how it's 20 feet high in the water. Okay, I stay correct. No, he, he got a loan month for that. Yeah. I'd almost agree with her that it might be a variance issue. It, it, it's a variance issue. Well, if, if this bylaw allows use variances, and I, I wasn't here to opine today about this, tonight about this, if your bylaw allows a use variance, that's where the, the relief should be granted here. This, the bylaw does not allow us in this district. It's an, it's an so if we granted a special permit, is it moot? Would we have to grant the variance? I, I think it would probably be more appropriately if there's a use variance to be granted. And again, I didn't look the bylaw over here. Nick might be able to tell me that. Do you allow for use variances in your bylaw? Uh, yes. That, it, that it's likely it would be a variance for, for use. It's not allowed, so therefore, just like a dimensional variance, it's, it, a bill is not allowed within a setback. If you want to do it, you have to come in. So it would probably be more properly a use variance. Are we able to hear and vote on that tonight with the intent of the posting? I, I, in my opinion, I, I, I say no. Um, I think that if you're gonna do something like this, it probably ought to be properly posted uh, so that people can come out and, and give their, their, uh, their input. Your, your opinion, Nick? Yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna uh, agree with Mr. Blake on this. Uh, so I think we get our extension and you have to reapply for a variance. Are you okay with that? Then I have to send all the abutters the same thing and go through another hundred dollars and apply another ninety dollars and all that stuff. I, because I, I wasn't I feel, informed of what I really needed to do I through the town in the first yeah, place. Yeah, I, I agree. But Sharon brought up a good point. I mean, I told them myself that it would be a special permit because it would be a use. But well, I have to do what I have to do, Jeff. And as an abutter, I'm going to have to take time out of my schedule to come back again because we can't make a decision on something. Well, it's, it's not an issue of decision now, it's an issue of variance versus special permit. No, the man is trying to do the right thing. Get a license and pay taxes accordingly. I, I agree. And we're going to waste our time again. And money. And the people's time and the town's time. So, Jeff, the intent is not here to issue a, a variance versus a special permit. Are you worried about somebody appealing it I am. within the 20 days? Of course, I, that, that's exactly what I am worried about. So if we took the vote to order a variance this evening, the onus would be on Mr. Holmes, and he can make that decision if he wants to appeal, well, to be a defendant in that appeal. 
I, I suppose you could go forward based on that, on that if, if you want to. So that, that's where it's at. If you have so everybody in the butter has 20 days to appeal this once it's mm -hmm. filed. Within that 20 days, if someone appeals it, you'll have to go and fight that appeal. Right. And it could be on the simple fact that it's a variance versus a special permit which was posted. So wait the, call the, 20 is, days. the call is yours if you want us to vote on this. Well, sure, if we can just take the vote and see how we make out. And if not, I can go are, for... Are you opposed to that, Tim? What would be the vote for? What the, would the, be the motion that I would look for would to, to <laughs> grant Mr. Holmes a variance to... Where are we? 40? Is it 40? 40 Allen Road. 40 yeah. Allen Road <coughs> with the conditions of not having more than two vehicles Operation hours between 9 to 4, Monday through Sunday. No service to any vehicles on property. And expiring on transfer of property. Those four conditions. And it would be a variance vote as opposed to a special permit vote. So uh, I got a couple of questions from Mr. Blake. One is, uh, how do you feel about us uh, turning this into a variance right on the spot? Oh, I've, I've already answered that question. Yeah, I didn't quite get. Yeah. I didn't quite get the. I, 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 I think it would be. I'm sort of chewing on it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would, it would be better to 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 re to restart the process for the variance. That's what, application and variance request. Right. I but understand that there are. There are people in the audience that, that spent their time, um, uh, but uh, to do it right, provided that there are use variances granted, and your building, your zoning enforcement officer tells me that there are, mm -hmm. it, it, it would be, right. it would be, at least people out there would know uh, a use variance versus right. a special. So, so Tim, oh, okay, I, I, I got it. So I got one more question for you. That is, um, when he goes for say, if it is, if, if we are correct, it's a second class. Um, mm -hmm. Class two. Uh, class two, um, sorry, uh, dealer's license. He goes before the selectmen, as best you know, and it's up to them to grant or not grant it at that point. The board of selectmen will look under the, under the statute. I'm forgetting the section of the verse, but they'll look at whether or not this is a suitable person. Right. Whether or not it's a suitable place, okay. and there's a bond requirement that will have to be met. So they if they could look at it, uh, the suitable place um, oh, part sorry. as violating or not violating the bylaws about whether he could have that business in that location. Well, presumably at this point, you would have granted a use we would, have, we would have said a... So you will make it so that, you know, in your opinion, that particular that particular business can be can be conducted there. Now again, that's not the end mm -hmm. of their analysis. When they're looking at a suitable place, they might also look for the neighborhood that it's in. They might look to see whether or not there's there's typically a plan mm -hmm. that is submitted to the with, with the class two license. So they'll see how many cars will be parked, when they'll be parked, all those kind of things that are that are kind of aside from from a zoning board of appeals uh, um, analysis, but it but it would certainly come into some it would come into their purview if this was not allowed in that district. Right. So in a way, we'd be kicking that part of it would be kicked up to the selectmen. But it would be he couldn't apply until after the appeal process of twenty days, and I as chair will entertain a a, a vote on a motion because I believe the intent is there. It is there. That is the intent. I mean, it's variance versus permit. It's it's good that we flag. It's all been. It's good that yeah, we no, I think that's fabulous that you flagged that. Absolutely. So, so nothing's changed except that one word. If we don't require him to redo this as a variance, what's the danger in this for us? And what's the There's nothing danger for us. in for, it, for it's him? For, it's for him, and that's where I gave him the, the ability to back out now and Within apply Within 20 days. If yeah. somebody appeals it, he'll have to fight that appeal. And that right. onus is on him. The, the question is, are we allowing 
enough of the public to really understand what we're doing, or is this kind of a closed, well? It's already been it's already thing. been advertised as a permit instead of a variance. And if anybody had any issues with the whole thing in general, they would be here tonight. Peter, in my opinion, yeah. I think if you're doing this, you're setting a very bad precedent. You are you are basically trying to finesse an issue. Peter, were you here for the whole time? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, Just asking you. Uh, no, no, Linus. okay. I'm here for the question about I've been here the whole time for the variance versus uh, the, the special permit. You're basically changing the ground rules. You're basically uh, it, opening yourselves up to an appeal from the planning board uh, as well as from the selectmen because you're not going according to the steps that are laid out in the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it looks like a pretty simple little thing here, but you're basically setting a bad precedent uh, for the next time as well. So, you know, granted, it is an inconvenience, but it protects you. I have not heard anybody speaking against this. It protects you from any appeal. It keeps it clean. I don't know whether the ZBA can simply waive the fee since you've already paid it for this process. It's not the fee, it's all the butters and the certifiers. And he, he's knowledgeable that we gave yep. him that choice. He's chosen to move forward. My belief, and they can weigh in on theirs, the intent is here. It uh -huh. is here, it's all here. Right. And, it's and specifically for the purpose, it's just verbiage of special permit versus variance. I would just simply say you are setting. But this a matter, it's not that do, much. Do it's not that important. So, do you want us to take a vote on the variance? If possible, it? let's just take a vote and see what happens. And if not, I can Any reapply further? for a variance instead of a permit. Any further discussion on this matter? I'm um, going to I mean, entertain uh, yeah, a right. motion to grant if, if Mr. Holmes a use variance for 40 Allen Road with the four conditions of not having more than two vehicles on said property between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. No service of any kind to any vehicles on property and um, expiring on, upon transfer of deed. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have discussion? Yeah, I have a question about that. I, I think um, on that one, it's not just if he sells the property, but if it be, if he rents it, for instance, or it, it does not, it's not his principal residence anymore. Maybe because he could rent it out, move somewhere else, rent it out, and still run the business out of there. So how would you like to word it? Well, I guess maybe not his principal residence, a sale or not his principal residence, put it both ways. Do we have a friendly amendment to? Yes. So you understand that, Pat? Yeah. Sale or, um, how do you want to word it? Sale or loss of permanent residence? Or um, become, Prim primary become residence? not his primary residence. Do we have a second to the amendment? Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just I know, it's just so if you rent it, it doesn't Any further become, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, I want to take a roll call on this. Come to our eye. No, I'll die. Yep. Cleveland eye? Huh? Can you say Cleveland eye? Oh, Cleveland eye. <laughs> this is the motion for the variance. This is the vote on the motion. Uh, I'm allowing him to yes. have this as a variance. As a variance with the four yes. conditions. Yeah, I, I will go along with you. Sign the die. Thank you. Let the record uh, reflect that it was a you. unanimous vote. To your favor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Good about one way or the other. Second. Yeah. One of those things. It's not uh, seven yeah. thirteen. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. We are definitely behind schedule. I'm going to open up the fourth. Oh. Right, phone, but it's not it's not needed to have him here. Okay, so I'm going to open uh, the next hearing at 7:13. Yes, sir. I do believe that his wife's cousin is here. Yeah, he wife's cousin in the crowd. Uh, Harry Spencer. Hi, sir. If you, I'm here in the water. Oh, oh, okay. 
So you're not related to this individual? Yeah, she is my cousin. Okay. But you didn't want to speak on the behalf? No. Okay. okay. Um, Brookfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at 645 Tuesday, October 10th, 2017 in the Brookfield Town Hall Banquet Room. The purpose of this hearing is to consider a request from Richard Helming Thorkelson to construct a shed at his property located at 44 Pine Lane in Brookfield. A variance is required due to the lot area being located in a floodplain in a pre-existing pre non-conforming lot. The property is located in the floodplain district. Uh, we have the paperwork in front of us. Lot area is 7,500 square feet. <laughs> Enlarged existing storage work shed from 6 by 10 to 8 by 15. We have the rendering existing all right so he's basically so do we have that plot plan in front of us yeah i think he's, he's basically trying to enlarge the existing shed with the dotted lines which does encroach the side but in my belief it doesn't encroach it any more than the existing garage no this is the only good plot plan we've seen so far. <laughs> but it doesn't have the setback, so. But I don't think setback, well. It doesn't have, well, it's, it's got a um, 34. You think that's what it means? And then 30, okay, so it does have setbacks. So it's it looks meaning, like, it looks like inches. Yeah. It's 34 inches. Wow, good eye. 34 inches is the garage corner, apparently, and the new shed will cut that down to 30 inches. And uh, that'll match the shed that's the neighbor's shed, who's also 30 inches from his line, so they'll be matching. And his existing house actually encroaches even closer. So the primary issue is the non-conforming and the floodplain. And again, this is a shed, it's not a residence. Well, I do have a 100-year floodplain, because I had some involvement with the addition that went on that house, being on the uh, Conservation Commission. The 100-year uh, floodplain is about two inches below below ground level right there. At, the at, at, the at where the garage is? No, where the porch is. On uh, porches on the house? Right. I'm yeah, yeah, right. That was two inches, about two inches below, below the, the ground, ground level. Yeah. So the, the shed really yep. kind of, is it in the floodplain? It's not in the floodplain. No. Because the 100 year floodplain is, you know, like I said, two inches below the corner of that porch there. And another issue that wasn't brought up was uh, that there was actually construction beginning on this without a permit. It was a cease and desist order issued by the yeah. zoning enforcement officer. Um, Nick, has he been paying? The fines, or did he pay any fine? No, we uh, made an agreement that he would uh, attempt to get there as soon as possible. Do we have any discussion here before we open it up to a butters? No. no. Any butters wish to address the board, sir? Did you have a? No, the only question, and if you just answered, this is for the shed or the addition to the party, and talk about the additional. The, the, no, it's not an it's not it's an additional project. It's not an eight eight by five, eight foot five inch by fifteen foot nine inch. Did all the abutters return the cards? We would yeah. Well the abutters are her sister and her cousin. There are no other abutters? Oh this is the one in the middle. Yeah. Oh he's a, yeah, he is out of the floodplain. So the issues are the floodplain and the non-conforming lot. Do we have any other discussion? The purpose that we're here for is to issue the variance, so I'm going to entertain a motion to issue a variance uh, to Mr. Is it Thorkelson? Yes. So moved. Uh, wait a minute. Um, to issue a variance for <laughs> the eight foot five inch by 15 foot nine inch addition to the existing shed. We have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Unanimous. Thank you, everyone.
Entertain a motion to adjourn at 718. So moved. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, next public hearing. Print this any smaller. Uh, it's scheduled for 7 o'clock. I'm going to open the meeting at 7.19. Brookfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. Tuesday, October 10th, 2017 in the Brookfield Town Hall Banquet Room. The purpose of this hearing is to consider an administrative appeal from John D. Holcraft at his property located at 26 Allen Road in Brookfield regarding the cease and desist order from the Zoning Enforcement Officer. Mr. Holcraft, did you want to join us? Or? Yes. So the Zoning Enforcement Officer hereby ordered a cease and desist for your use of the property located at 26 Allen Road, Brookfield, Mass. For purposes of storage of junk and other debris of a junk slash scrap yard. He has observed that you've stored junk and other debris at the property. The subject property is located within the town's floodplain zoning district. Pursuant to the zoning bylaw at section 4B, 1C, you cannot have more than one principal use of the property and pursuant to the zoning bylaw use regulation table, commercial use such as junk or scrap yard are not allowed by the right of the floodplain district. Therefore, you are, you and all persons acting on your behalf or in concert with you are hereby ordered to immediately cease and desist each of the activities described above and as they violate the Brookfield Zoning Bylaws. This means that all use of the property for a junk or scrap yard must cease and all of the materials, vehicles, and equipment associated with such use must be removed from the property forthwith. Please be advised if you are aggrieved by this order, it may be appealed in accordance with Master and the Law, Chapter 40A, Section 815, Section 12, Town Hall Zoning Bylaw. However, any such appeal would not excuse you your immediate compliance with the order as set forth herein. Yes, sir. He has the cards returned from his, uh, you turn them in yet? So the appeal, the nature of the appeal for Mr. Holcraft, no junk was present, looks good from street and neighbors. Nature of relief request. No junk was present when issued notice from ZEO. No fine should be imposed on me. That's just a copy. So, Mr. Thomo, first, did you have any? Did you have anything to say in regards to the cease and desist, and any action after or before? The, uh, I just like to go over a couple of definitions first. On the principal use, it's the primary use of a bottom building. Under accessory use, a use that is incidental to and secondary to a principal use located on the same lot or adjacent lot. Um, Mr. Holcraft is in the floodplain district. The purpose of the floodplain district is to protect the public health, safety, general welfare protect human life properly from the hazards of periodic flood, flooding. Under section 4B, prohibited use, all districts, the development of a single lot. Stand corrected, prohibited use. Uh, C, more than one principal use on a lot may only be allowed by special permit issued by the Zoning of Appeals. <coughs> Mr. Holcraft is running a business at that property. He has, he had a lawn care business that is dwindling down, but he's still doing that, I believe. He has a junk removal business that is still ongoing. And it is expressly prohibited under the Zoning Bylaws of Brookfield. So the cease, the cease and desist was for for the property itself, not the junk. Having a secondary use. The junk just shows the secondary use. It's a secondary use as a, because of his business as a junk removal. 
So his response, if there was no junk present, really is irrelevant. And he still has equipment, he still has trucks, and he still has debris on the property. Which justifies, in your mind, a business. Uh, it justifies in any reasonable mind. Which violates the zoning <coughs> bylaws of secondary use. Expressed Board? Comments? Yeah, I think that the ask right now. Well, it's the secondary use is, uh, is very. You can see it there. It's not like uh, if he puts pieces of plywood up to hide it, but that's beside the point. Well, it's again, it's a junk issue versus secondary use business issue. Right, the scrap. Well, the, the business itself. Right. It, there could be no junk there. You could have a bobcat. And well, that's, you know, because contractors, yeah, or something, it's a second business. But I know they're, they're both trucks are filled with scrap. Good there. Tim? Dave, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, first of all, I'm not in the flood zone. Um, number 28 is in the flood zone. I'm not in the flood zone. Um, One second. If I may, if you're going to go forward with this, we can't because he's leaving. So I'm going to I'm going to recess until he returns. Thank you, sir. All right, we will reconvene at 7:29. The floor is yours again, Mr. Holcraft. Please, everyone. All right, like I was saying before, I'm not in a um, flood zone. Mm -hmm. The house next door is in a flood zone. Pastoral is in a flood zone. I own that also. 26 Allen Road is not in a flood zone, so I want to make that straight. Um, number two, I'm appealing both things. Junk on my property and running the business from my property. I'm not running the business from my property. I have my trucks there. I bring my truck home at night, and I have a bobcat there. Um, as far as the junk, the junk, most of the junk was removed two, three years ago, and I've gotten a pretty good handle on it. I like my business. I bring my stuff home with me, but I got rid of most of it, all of it. What I have now is some riding lawnmowers. Um, the CEO here has failed to show me all pictures of junk. He said the biggest thing was when he first come up there, I asked him, why did you send me a letter? He says, well, I haven't even been up on the property. I well, said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to entertain a junk discussion. I'm going to entertain. This is for both. I appealed for both. For what? This this is a, an appeal for for this the storage of stuff there. Yes. The use was that was that was done after. Well, the whole issue is is the use. Well, I appealed for the stuff right. on the property. As far as I'm concerned, you can store whatever you want on it. The issue before us tonight. No, that's not. I I appealed this the stuff on the property. Is secondary use. Yeah, but that's have, not what have, I appealed on. We have nothing to do with the junk on the property. Oh, I, I appealed that. Yes, sir. If I may be heard. Yes. Um, there, were, there, were, there were two cease and desist letters that had been sent out. One was for junk, one right. was for use. The junk was on appeal. Mm -hmm. And uh, just so that you know, that matter is now before the land court. You're and saying the junk is unappealed before us this evening. That's right. It was not appealed before you this evening. No. What was appealed is the use of the property for two principal purposes. And that's without the requisite special permit. And that's why I'm stating that we just want to hear the special use. No, but that my appeal was for the stuff on the property. That's what it was for. They both go hand in hand, and I appealed it in the in the timely manner, and that's what I'm here for. What he's attempting to do is he's attempting to bring this up so that he can go to land court no. and say that I've got an administrative remedy. Um, he, I, I don't know what he intended to do, but that cease and desist order that was issued by the zoning enforcement officer, which was brought to you, was brought uh, as an appeal, was for under 4B1C, which is two uses on the property. Not what do you have there? That's that's not what I'm bringing forward. It has nothing to do with land court. The the order the order for the one that I did read because my assumption based on right. this description was the special use was the order for for the junk issue through Google Earth was July 30th of 2017. Do you have a copy of the appeal? 
I don't have a copy. I have a copy of the cease and desist letter. I yeah. do not have a copy of the appeal. The application for hearing filed on August 29, 2017. Nature of appeal, which I read, was no junk was present, looks good from street and neighbors. That's what I'm here for. Na nature of relief or request, no junk was present. When issued notice from CEO, no fine should be imposed on me. So technically, he's right. His, his appeal is on junk. Mr. Conway, but, but my understanding is the cease and desist order that was given by the CEO with respect to that junk was given on July 6th. The cease and desist is this yes. dated July 30th. For the use. So if it was in fact for the junk, he missed the 30 day period, and I'd suggest to you you don't have uh, jurisdiction to hear that. Do you so, have, do you have the same copy that I have? No, that's, that's not true, Jeff. Right, but what I'm saying is, right, but what I'm saying is there was a cease and desist order for junk. Which is this. That was issued, no. No, the one that you have, which is this right here. Right, this is under here for the, for the, for the uses. Right? There was a cease and desist order that was issued under a different bylaw section on July 6th for the junk, saying get rid of the junk. It says get rid of all the equipment and the, and the like. So your letter is different than mine. No, I don't think it is. Oh, yours is me. Yeah, we, we don't have any July 6th. No, you don't. No, we don't. Because he didn't appeal that. Okay. This is the one I appeal and it says right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. July 30th. Mm -hmm. And what's it say there? The property located is property for the purposes of storage of junk and other debris. That's right. No, that's correct. But the and cease and desist says the use. No, that's the, not what it says here. Yes, it does. Let Look at the next again. paragraph. This one right here. Okay. Yeah. The cease and desist is for the use. For the junk. That's no, it's for the use. The junk and the, and the, and the, use yep. the junk has already moved on to court. The junk has already moved on to court because so there was a, a cease and desist that said stop storing junk, open air storage. Right. That's junk. what we're talking about. So as, as advertised this evening, Mr. Holcraft, we're here to discuss the, the secondary use, yeah. not the junk. Well, it goes hand in hand. And that's no. what I appealed. I, but the towns move forward from that. Okay. So anyway, there's, so there was no there was no business going on there. I bring my my truck home like I have since 2000. So my, my question to you. And is, there's no scrap. There's nothing there. My question to you to, to remedy that: Are you a DBA, LLC? No. Operate? I'm not doing any of that there. I'm just bringing my no, work truck how home. How are you? How are you incorporated? Are you? A, Doing business as David Holcraft? Yeah, metal, else? yeah, metal mounted lawn and tree service. That's and how where, I do. Where's do you have a business license? No, I don't need one. No. Nope. Where do you get your mail from for that business? I have a mail um, Brookfield PO box. So you have no actual physical business building or office? Oh, I, I have I have a warehouse, yes. No, but I get my I get my business I get my business mail in my PO box in Brookfield in Brookfield and when you say warehouse where is that located uh, in in Southbridge and what's the primary purpose of the storage of my stuff so the, so the question you're backing up now is am I running a business there no there's no activities there at all nothing I bring my work truck home and that's it. There's no piles of scrap. There's nothing going on there. The only thing I've been doing is, is I've been clean, tidying up the property, which I've already done. Which there really wasn't anything there. The biggest thing was my pontoon boat. What are these now? Allen Road. And I get the pictures too. There's nothing that says I can't keep my work truck there or my bobcat there. This is the junk issue though, isn't it? This is out his business. He's running the business out of that address. No, I'm not running my business out of that address. I bring my truck home and that's it. It's no different than anyone else. It's worthless. So how am I running my business out of that address? That's what I want to know. Yeah. We got piles of stuff everywhere? No. <clears throat> Are there any questions why we passed this, these photos? 
Yeah, what, what does he have stored at the address? Uh, he has trucks, equipment, and debris. How many trucks? Two unregistered. Two open-ended ones. Three with the one that actually runs the Bobcat. He's got lawn, lawn equipment, uh, mowers, and so, a lot of debris. So let's go back to the trucks. How many trucks does he have? Three total. And two are unregistered? Filled yes. the junk. And one is not? Correct. Great. Is the one that's not look like it's being used? It is being oh, used. Oh, yeah. I leave my truck there. And, um, okay, so what else is there? Uh, lawn equipment. Lawn equipment means like mowers? Lawn mowers. Yeah. Lawn mowers? Yeah. How many lawn mowers? How, how many? Uh, at least two. Okay. They're on my trailer for my, my properties. I can keep them on, they're on a trailer. All right. He has a business at that address. No, I do he not. Uh, are, 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 the, that are the mowers on a trailer? Yes. yes right. On the same trailer? Yes, they are. Yeah. They're for and, my uh, and properties. And, and what else is there? There's um, a bobcat. That's it. There's a bobcat. Uh, unregistered vehicles. No, we just talked, we already talked about the two trucks, no. Nick. Don't make us sound I'm asking Nick, not you, please. Okay, I just answered, but I'm Nick. telling you the truth. I'm not you asking you. Yeah, I have well, why I'm, why I'm waiting for him. He has for workers him. there on, on, in the pictures, in the workers there. Right. I mean, I don't think there's a question he has, he's running a business out of that address. It's common knowledge he has a business there. His employees are not there. Nice pictures. You can read them. Mm. Is this one of the uh, yes. vehicles that doesn't work? Yeah. Yes, the plywood. It's trying to hide the trucks filled with junk. Yeah, I saw the plywood. The junk man looks like a business, doesn't it? It's said on the truck. Yeah. Well, that's what I do, There's but I'm not running my business out of it. I keep bringing my truck home every night like I have since 2000. So, is there picture evidence that supports that he has, is running his business out of that address and there is John Hall? Is there picture evidence? I can't see. There's a lot of there's no activity of any pictures of anything being done at this address because there's nothing being done here except my storage of my trucks. That's it. Well, it's a, it's a landscape construction. Yeah, contractor. Right. Picture of it. So, yeah. Gen 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 this employee is dropped off at that address every morning to go to work. There's pictures of his employees, Mr. Pompois. There's photos of his employees. I, I, I saw it. It's not, it's not a fine line, Mr. Comcoyce. No, there's no fine line, Mr. Comcoyce. When I hired Mr. Holcraft to go and clean out an apartment line, the appliances that he took out of that, that apartment sat in front of 28-gallon, I'm sorry, 26-gallon rows for four months. It's not, not for sale. There's no activity there going no, on here. There is no. There are appliances with doors on them. There's a junk car in the back that you can see from the lake. These are just, I'm assuming, from the road. The view from the lake is beautiful also. I've seen him drive into the property with his truck full of mattresses on three separate occasions. You can see that from the road. Just in the last so three months, in, in less than the course. two years that I have to go to do you think he's running a business out of that address? Me personally? Yes, you personally. Activity. Then it's not iffy. It's guaranteed. There's no activity because going on here. No. Maybe you want to speak when you're smoking too, please. Okay. Any manners at all? I'm speaking now. Well, you're not. Your turn to speak. Okay, well, I'm speaking. May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Not yet, Dave. Okay. Now, I'll answer any more questions you have for me. I, whatever you need to ask, I'll answer them. So, so when I when I say fine line, it's it's provable. What's it going to take to prove versus pictures? 
When, Every when, morning for the so, last so when, when, when Ken asked for, for patience with Dave, I'd ask the same for you. I personally believe that there is a business being run out of that property. But, but you have to understand that when we move on from this, the fine line, no is, fine line. is a court of law. It doesn't matter. It does matter. No, let it happen. Mr. Mr. Holcraft it wants us to go to court. I'm like, we should go to court. If he wants to go to court, we should go to court. So let the judge handle it. So a straw poll, you think he's running a business out of residence? Uh, yes, and I think he needs a special permit to do that. Which he doesn't have. Which he doesn't have. Which he's not requesting this evening. I'm no, not, I'm he, not requesting he is not. He's, he's arguing against and the he's... cease and desist, and I think that uh, he has no argument. You haven't shown me any activity of, of me running a business out of here except me bringing my truck in and out. That's it. Well, through admission of Sue, she's seen property there for four months. Dave. Not just Sue, the whole neighborhood. Well, the, well this, this evening, the, not Sue, just Sue's the only one speaking to me. You, you, you see, I come in with my truck. Sometimes it's empty, sometimes it's full. But I, I bring it home at night. There you but go. I'm so, not running my business, per se, off this property. So if It's were, only my truck that you see if there. If you were asking for a straw poll, I would say that uh, you'd refuse the appeal. Okay. Second. So, yeah, I believe so, so. Yes, ma'am. Colin, yes. So, we have a man who. Through, through the chair, though, okay. Thank you. We have a man who drives around and home, home, has a business that says junk removal, and he has junk in his yard. That's un undisputable. He parks his car at this place so I think it's um, a reasonable conclusion to say that. Ken, can I see? Um, that's what he's using it for. And he's reason. not bringing it someplace else. The junk is in his yard. Now what I'm asking for is yeah. for the Zoning Board of Appeals to deny his appeal. Uh, deny his appeal and issue him an order to remove all vehicles, well, equipment, and debris that's currently on his property. <laughs> us, us just simply denying it would fall back to you, and that would your you can, yes, you can put in those conditions also. So you're requesting conditions of what? Removal. Of the, like, I put it in there. It's in the cease and desist. Well, just removal of the vehicles, equipment, to and comply, debris. To comply to cease and desist, ZEO's cease yes. and desist order. He can have one unregistered vehicle in his yard. Right. Not full of junk. It, see, the, the issue isn't junk, but as Colleen says, it, it's proving that there is a business because he's a junk man. I, I haven't forgotten about you, Jeff, I promise. He's got equipment there. He's, he's got equipment. It's he's got a lot of equipment, and that comprises a lot of the junk. A lot of people, when I speak, a lot of people in no, town have. No, you weren't uh, asked to speak by the you, chairman. You, yet. you weren't. Um, the issue isn't the, the bylaw for storage of vehicles. Those are business vehicles. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand right. that it's a business. Yeah. They have the name. That's why we're denying the appeal. Jeff? Yeah, a question. Take her statement a little further. Is, yes, he has the truck. He has all the whatever he picks up, the scrap of junk, per se, we'll use. Uh, it is in the yard. So in fact, it's been picked up somewhere else, brought to that yard. And eventually it takes it somewhere else, whether it be to Willowbury or Millbury for disposal or scrap yard to cash in the, the metal. I guess my question is, so if you're, if you're picking it up somewhere, bringing it somewhere to store it until you eventually get enough copper, per se, to bring to the scrap yard to cash in, that's a business. Mm -hmm. So you using a butter believe there's a business there as well? I, I believe it, without any... Uh, Doubt is a business there because you collect what you have. You're not going to show up with a four foot piece of pipe to collect it. If you collect, if you pick clean out somebody's yard, you're going to wait till you have a substantial amount and then bring it to the scrapyard for to, to for weight or whatever to, to collect your. So, Dave, your response to everything that's been said. Yeah, that I understand what Jeff just said, but that's not true. I'm not bringing stuff there and piling it up. You have the pictures you show here on my lawnmowers, my snowblowers, and some screens. 
but it doesn't show any junk, debris. It doesn't show sofas, mattresses, tires, refrigerators. It shows no, none of that stuff. None of that stuff is there. Just what I bring in, let me, let, let me speak, please. No, let him finish. Let me speak now. Let me speak now. I'm being very polite to you guys. I'm not bringing my stuff and storing it on this property. I bring my truck home every night. It may be full, it may be empty. And then I leave in the morning with it. But do I drop stuff off, reload, put it back on? No, I do not. And each picture show, if you look at those pictures, it just shows snow blowers and my lawnmowers and other stuff, screens to the house. It doesn't show piles of junk anywhere. You haven't shown me a pile of junk. The biggest thing Nick was complaining about is my pontoon boat. Out of that's, everything. That's, that's a junk issue, Dave. This issue is about... The well, you, okay, you're talking about junk. We're talking about bringing junk to my... There's no piles of stuff on my property through those pictures. So I'm not running that site. So you're, are you denying the butters stating that you... Yeah, I don't... Yeah, there's no piles of stuff in any of these there, pictures. There never was? No. I bring, I bring the truck home, but I don't pile up scrap until I get a big pile and then bring it in. I do not do that. There's no piles of sofas, mattresses, tires. All right, so this... So you can vote however you want, but there's no activity. There's no business activity being run from that location. I do bring my truck home there. So my belief that there's no business activity, it's not an issue to comply with the with the order. Well, I don't know what I can do. I mean, I'm not working out of that yet. I mean, you don't see the bobcat running every day. It's just packed there. It's not picking up metal. It's not picking I, yeah, up I dirt. Think it, I think it's something you'll have to work out with the CEO. I think. All right, I'll, I, I'll, I'll do that with him. I think with, with the discussion we've had here this evening, the board is unanimous that there is a secondary use of a business. <clears throat> I'm going to entertain a motion to deny the appeal and to comply with the CEO's cease and desist order immediately. So moved. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. I will make entertain a motion to adjourn at 7:49. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I will open the final. Hearing at the same time, 749. The Brookfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at 715, Tuesday, October 10th, 2017, in the Brookfield Town Hall Banquet Room. The purpose of this hearing is to consider an administrative appeal from John D. Holcraft at a property owned by him at 17 West Main Street in Brookfield regarding a cease and desist order. What the? I thought we had a sign. Do we have three from you, Dave? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, this is 17, so cease and desist, so... So this is another issue altogether. Yeah, that's correct. Now, now I'm confused. <coughs> Regarding a cease and desist order from the Zoning Enforcement Officer, the letter that I've read is a cease and desist for another <coughs> business at 17, correct? West Main Street. That was a cease and desist on 17 West Main? Correct. But the no, that's not the issue, though. But but the appeal. So have has he? So no, first of all, has, he's. A, I believe he's appealing uh, a request for a sign. Sign, correct. Right. Okay. Yes. There's no cease and desist on that. No, it was just a denial. That's all. Right. What what went out for? Um, what went out for the Telegram and Gazette posting for this? Was it for cease and desist on the... It's regarding a cease and desist it was, it was order exactly from the ZEO, period. By name at 17 West Main Street, regarding a cease and desist. So, Dave, the issue we have before us tonight is that it was advertised as you appealing the cease and desist order. That's not what I put in there. It was advertised as a cease and desist well, that's, order. That's, that's you guys did the advertisement. I'm, I'm this gonna, is for the sign. Yeah, and that's what I'm just catching now. Right. I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm going to rule that we can't even hear this tonight because he wants to talk about a sign. The public here is about a cease and desist. So we're going to okay. have to, as a town, go out and re-advertise for his initial appeal, which is pretty clear of permitting the sign for freedom of speech in a business district. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got a letter that uh, was about a sign. The posting in the paper isn't about a sign. Uh, am I correct, Jeff? Am I correct in how I want to proceed here? Uh, well, uh, there's, there's, there's definitely an issue with notice here. 
and that would give somebody an opportunity on an appeal. There's an issue with what, please? The, the, I'm sorry, there's an issue with the notice. The notice in the paper said that he was appealing a cease and desist order. And, I mean, and we have a cease and desist but his, order right here. His application But he's not appealing it. He's appealing the sign. He's appealing the sign. We don't have any letters saying there's a cease and desist against well, we, the we, sign. It's, it's in the packet for the cease and desist, but that's not what he's appealing. Right, we didn't get a cease and desist on it. It's in the packet? The, yeah. yeah. The, the intent, however, like the last one, is not here, in what? my belief. It's not in my packet. For the cease and desist? For the cease and desist it's about a, the sign. No, there was, he doesn't there have a any, sign, so there's, there's no cease intent. and desist. No. The no. way this was posted in the Telegram and Gazette, which, was, which is by law what we have to do, yeah. was posted for that third letter in this packet. It was a cease and desist on the business. Right. Mr. Holcraft is not appealing that. He's appealing the sign. So it was posted incorrectly. The intent is not the same as the sign, so. Okay, what I said was there is no paperwork in my packet that says there's anything about a cease and desist or a denial or whatever for a sign. Correct. I don't see that. That's why we can't talk about it tonight. Sure. Was there one? <coughs> yes. There yes. was. Yes. Yeah. His, yes. Okay, well, you don't have it. You can't, you, gotta, cease and, you can't cease and desist something that's not created. Right. It, he's appealing his denial of a permit application. Right. If he started and there's a cease and desist, that's an issue. So did we botch this? This is botched. Okay. So and everything's normal. That's what I want to know. It's and, still normal. And the intent is, the intent we don't is not We don't need that here. kind of comment. Well, it's a truthful comment. Uh, we don't need that kind of it's comment. It's a truthful okay. comment. Would, would you ask him he's to be quiet? He's all set. Just through us, okay? So the intent isn't here. We can't discuss it. We're going to have to repost it. Mr. Chairman, if yes, I sir. What, when was the appeal filed? When was it was filed? Eight twelve, eight seventeen. Right. You have a hundred days. <coughs> so if we postpone this for a month, we're good. Eight seventeen, nine seventeen, ten seventeen. Yes. Well, we need two weeks to post plus another wiggle room of a week. Seventeen. So that brings it to a month, Pete. Do you say 100? It says that any applicant for a permit has to be current in all of his fees, taxes, and so forth. I don't believe that Mr. <laughs> oh boy. is current. That onus, that onus is on the building inspector, not this board. May I speak to that? You would have the authority. No, Dave, no, you can't. We're, we're not going to hear it tonight anyway, so it's kind no, of. Oh, I just wonder why you were even entertaining the. Uh, entertaining the application if he's not current uh, in, in the payment of his uh, fees owed uh, for services. That's or, between the building inspector and the tax collector. There's, there's forms for that, that he has to go before the tax collector, she has to sign off and present it to the building inspector. So the onus is on the building inspector. But we can't hear it because it's not posted correctly. So I'm going to entertain a motion to continue. Yes, sir. The letter that I just gave to Pat was addressed to the Telegram Gazette and to me as a, and a butter. And it says, uh, appealing a permit for a sign. Right. What I have in front of me. <laughs> okay. Is, is I, but both of these are on Brookfield letterhead. The one that I read is the one that I have in front of me. Dated the same exact date. But the same exact time. I don't know. I don't know. Unless we have a copy. Anybody have a copy of the posting of the TNG? <laughs> what was the posting? I don't know the report. So, Kim, you have the right packet. Well, you got the right packet. There's no appeal to a cease and desist. It's just a denial. It's still a town of Well, it's a mismatch. With, with that piece of paper, that does not roll with that one. That's what I said. It's botched. The hearing is botched. Are you looking, Justin? Sean, have you There we go. No, we can't. He, he didn't appeal one, and the, the one he did do, he, we have to redo it. So, there we go.
This is um, Sue's stuff. Pro probably should go to the go to the cat. side of caution so I'm going to entertain a motion to reschedule um, this hearing with the proper posting for November 7th at 6 p.m. in the banquet hall. So moved. We have a second? Second. Any discussion? I'd like to comment on something. Yes sir. I'd like to comment that. Yes sir. Would Peter go? Well, that's that's not a comment through the chair. I'm not going to entertain. You okay, I wonder. To the board? Okay, okay. I'll talk to you then. Let me talk to you then. I don't need to talk to Does you. Does that have anything to do with this motion? It has to do with this this permit. Yeah, permitting process. Yeah. Quick one. This board is only to give me the okay, yes or no for sign. Then I go to, for the permitting process through the permitting office. Correct. I that is when. Wait a minute. Let me finish. That is when. They can say I owe money or I don't owe money, and then they can say, I, that, I, 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 just let me finish. But I made that comment already. I know, but I want to make it clear. So this board is only to give authorization for or against something. And then once I get approval, I then if I get approval, I go through the permitting office, and then they say, you can't get a permit because you owe real estate taxes or you owe something else. That's the way it's done. Yep. So I want to make sure Peter understands that. Really? No, he's not in the room. About that subject as well, and it's more just a question. What is the mechanism if the building inspector or the tax collector finds that there are outstanding debts or outstanding a, a issues? Permit is not issued until it's resolved. Anything. But what's the mechanism? Do they know what it's, it's, it's a sheet. No, it's it has sheet. nothing to do with okay. us. Right. But the permit was denied by the zoning enforcement officer, so it hadn't even gotten to a permit stage. Okay. <coughs> Can I get my letter back? <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. 801. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.